Press Code The newly amended Press Code took effect on January 1, 2019. You will note that it contains plain language and is more reader-friendly than its predecessor. The clauses in the code will be displayed on screen one by one. Pause each clause if the video flashes by too fast and make a point of perusing each clause carefully. Chapter 1, Clause 1 deals with gathering and reportage of news. According to the Press Council, Sections 1.1 and 1.8 are the clauses that are most frequently contravened. 1.1 requires the media to take care to report news truthfully, accurately and fairly. 1.8 requires asking for comment from those affected by your reportage. Clause 1.2 tackles fake news. Sanef has indicated that the term fake news is one we should do away with. Rather, the terms misinformation and disinformation should be used. Misinformation is intended fake news. Disinformation refers to information that is inaccurate or untrue and was caused by negligence. The media should not publish either misinformation or disinformation. Clause 1.4 of the Press Code states, News should be obtained legally, honestly and fairly unless public interest dictates otherwise. One frequently asked question is this, when will public interest justify obtaining news in an illegal way? Johanna Tief warns that this should not be done in the absence of proper public interest or where there are other legal ways of getting the information you need. This will be discussed in more detail when we get to Chapter 3 of the Code. Clause 1.5 determines that the media should use personal information for journalistic purposes only. This is discussed in more detail under Clause 4. Decoding the code offers some guidance on Clause 1.6, which requires media members to identify themselves unless public interest dictates otherwise, or safety concerns dictate otherwise. Johanna Tief states that obscuring your identity will be justifiable only if there is a public interest in the matter you are investigating or if your safety is at stake. In addition here to do this only if there is no other way of getting the information that you need. Remember that Clause 8 always applies. Even if you went undercover to obtain information, you must give those incriminated the opportunity to comment before publishing. Clause 1.7 of the Code deals with verification. In his notes, Retief distinguishes between verification, which is establishing the truth of information, and corroboration, when you have another source to confirm what you have been told. Read more on page 21 of Decoding the Code. Note that another publication can never be a primary source. Any scoop or tip-off that you learn from another media institution should be verified by yourself responsibly and independently. Clause 1.8 is the most contravened clause of the press code. The crux is this. If your story may likely cause someone harm, rightly or wrongly so, you are ethically obliged to ask such a person for comment. The subject must be offered a reasonable time to reply. What is a reasonable time? According to the Press Council, this is enough time to comment meaningfully. This will vary from one scenario to the next, and journalists should exercise their discretion responsibly. If you are unable to get someone's comment prior to publication, you must explain this in your story. In other words, your story will always feature either the comment of those incriminated the fact that they declined to comment, or the fact that you tried to obtain their comment but was unsuccessful, and an explanation of why this is the case. If you have limited information, state this in your report, promise to follow up as soon as more info becomes available, and follow through on your promise. Clauses 1.10, 1.11 and 1.12 deals with making amends for mistakes made. On this video screen, you will now see an example of a print apology done right, an online correction done right, and an online apology done right.
Clause 1.13 bars plagiarism. Plagiarism is described as follows. Reporters who take text from others without acknowledging where they got it from are guilty of plagiarism. This clause also touches on content aggregation. If you must take content from someone else, limit it to the minimum and clearly state your source. Press releases should not be published under a journalist's byline. Because plagiarism and content aggregation are such contentious issues, we have rolled out an interim policy which will be discussed in more detail during 2019's Editors' Conference. Clause 2 of the Press Code. This clause deals with independence and conflicts of interest. It is pretty self-explanatory. Read more on pages 27 to 30 of Decoding the Code. In short, remember this. Your reporting must not be influenced or biased. Readers should be able to distinguish clearly between advertising material and editorial material. Always remember that your actions should not lead readers to doubt your independence and professionalism. This applies to your conduct during and after work hours, online as well as offline. Clause 3 of decoding of the press code and the explanation in decoding the code deals with privacy, dignity and reputation.